everybody. Once again, I am Lee McCracken Jr., aka Zorval John Mustang Guru. We have Mars the Video Cat here. And today, instead of doing an update or a uh, bi weekly update or tour Tuesday, I'm going to do hopefully a short thought and discussion basically because, again, life happens. It's close to the holidays. People are doing things with family and friends, etc and a lot of our games have been canceled except last Friday we did play Earth Dawn and this thoughts and discussion is based off of a few times where I've talked about uh, my, my views here and there on failing forward as well as what happened in that Earth Dawn campaign so, so a lot of times things get me thinking because it happens in an actual campaign and that's another reason why I do my updates and talk about uh, the games I'm playing because a lot of times what's occurring in the games causes me to think about those type of things whether they're systems or rules mechanics etc so failing forward and what happened Friday which wasn't failing forward at all it was basically when failure sets you up for success and it's different than failing forward. So first, what is failing forward? Um, any person who's role-playing and in lots of newer games, and when I say newer, I really mean the last decade, two decades, because time flies, but it's definitely not old school, old school 70s, 80s, new school 2000, uh, beyond that, with the 90s really having a mixture where you could see developments of new school ideas and hanging on to some old school type thing and there's older games that have a lot of new school stuff and a lot of new games that have old school stuff so that's very general but again everything in these videos is my opinion etc but going back to the topic or half the topic failing forward so failing forward is something that I first noticed in D&D 4th edition and half of you are no longer here <laughs> because I said fourth edition but okay D&D fourth edition it was a really cool concept when I read it back in like 2009 2010 because I didn't get into D&D fourth edition when it first came out in 2008 I read a review after that uh, about it probably a year afterwards and didn't even realize the new edition it came out and was hey wow this is something that actually this article I'm reading says that it sucks and all of these reasons why it sucks are reasons that I actually think it might be a cool game and therefore I got it and that's why I said hey even if you don't like my if you, if you don't like my content that's fine I'm not saying you have to watch it but if you don't like a lot of my thoughts and opinions on stuff and you take a different form that is a way to know hey if he likes this then maybe I probably won't or if he doesn't like it then maybe I need to look into it so that was the type of mindset I had this person doesn't like it but all of their reasons for not liking it are reasons that I probably would like it so failing forward D&D 4th edition an example is say that you are traveling through a jungle or a forest crossing a lake whatever you are traveling an old school philosophy is if you would roll whatever that naturally appropriate roll was for whatever system you're talking about whether it's sense of direction or orienteering or say just nature if you're you know traveling through the wilderness whatever that skill is old school philosophy maybe would give you bonuses if you're a ranger or if that's your uh, favorite terrain depending on the game or just certain things like that did you grow up in the area but whatever that mechanic is to determine success or failure old school mentality is more of a you failed it you failed it you don't get to where you're going sorry figure out a different way to do it or don't go there and my personal belief is in open world sandboxy type games where there are lots uh, there's a plethora of options and hooks and and things like that out there just failing is acceptable if we are going to the 
the caves of the Winter King and we fail finding those caves, well, that's not the only thing there. There are other places and other woods and there, there's just lots of other things that maybe we'll attempt to go there later. Maybe we won't, but right now we're not going there. And it might kind of suck for the game master if that's the only thing that he or she has built up. That was the adventure that the game master was thinking would occur. But sometimes as a game master you just have to go with the flow. You know that the players are going to do things that you do not plan for. They're going to go places you do not plan for. And if it takes a, hey guys, I wasn't expecting this, but let's, you know, give me 30 minutes, go out for pizza, go to McDonald's, whatever, and come back. I'll, I'll just say, if you have a point where if that, if you know that they need to make that to go there, you should have some rough idea of what to do if, if they don't. Um, whether it's going back in town and having another shopping at, you know session whatever but what I'm saying is that it can make sense and it doesn't have to be completely waste if you do not get to that place because of your role failing forward is a you get to it but maybe it takes you longer and what does that mean maybe you're a little exhausted in D&D 4th edition they had healing surges and you only had a certain amount per day once your healing surges were gone you did not heal there was maybe one cleric spell or version of it, the, the cure wounds, whether it's cure light, cure uh, all, all those different types. But most of healing was based off of your healing surges. So if you had eight or ten healing surges and you lost a couple of those, that meant even spells, even drinking potions and stuff, they uh, were taken away from your healing surges. So you drank a potion, you healed, but you lost a healing surge by doing that, meaning you had less times you could be healed. Everybody in D&D 4th edition was restricted on how much healing they could get, except for those one or two cases that would be healed as if you spent a healing surge. Most of them said, you heal them this amount of money, or they are healed this amount of, not money, <laughs> this amount of hit points, they get healed this amount of hit points, they lose a healing surge or it takes a healing surge. So that that fatigue showed by reducing healing surges. And failing forward meant you made it to that king of the, the sorry, <laughs> I really messed up with words today, wow. You make it to the cave of the winter king and it took you longer. You are exhausted so everybody loses two healing surges in a game i believe the situation similar to that that could come up would be in one of the um oh ffg final flight games uh they're they're various star wars games edge of the empire uh age of rebellion and the the, the force force and destiny i believe on those you might lose i can't remember what the they had they had a, a dam uh, really hurt damage and then like a fatigue damage it let me like fatigue or in Torg where you take some shock points uh, not necessarily a wound but it is a you had a trouble getting there but you get there these type this and this is failing forward it, it doesn't stop the adventure and what they mean by stopping the adventure is normally one of those things up there like the like right in there above me are the adventures for Torg Eternity, both Mega Adventures and uh, Delphi missions. And those are things that if you are like, hey guys, we are gonna play Unhallowed Data, or we are gonna play Blood on the Blasted Lands, or the God Box, whatever Mega Adventure or Delphi mission you bring out, we're going to play this. And if there is a type of situation where it is if somebody fails this the adventure stops yes that's kind of a problem because you might not have backups for it especially if it's a a limited time either a one night session 
not an ongoing campaign or a like three months you know we're gonna for the next three months we're gonna play this mega adventure whatever it is if it stops there game over then failing forward makes a lot of sense again I don't necessarily agree with large open-ended campaigns where there's lots of hooks and stuff like there I don't necessarily agree with failing forward so if you watch like my blood on the blasted lands where a game master on roll hit die or you watch the current ones where I'm a player there could be a lot of failing forward you will see that and in those games it is a you get there you take a, a couple of shock and stuff uh, one of the fourth act of relics of power that occurs there is a situation where they're in snow and stuff and I'm I'm the author of that act I'm in Tharkold and if you do certain things you no matter what you'll get through the snow but depending on what you do you get to the other end normal or with some shock um, environmental shock that doesn't go away after resting because you're chilled to the bone until you can get your uh, character warmed up again but that's a failing forward that works for those types of, of games open worldish games which have lots of hooks and nothing has determined this has to go or the entire campaign comes to a screeching halt I don't agree with fail forward so if you watch like my uh, Palladium first edition homebrew on this channel that I have those I don't fail forward if people make bad rolls or they fail then it is okay you fail now let's go on do something different don't continue that way one of the uh, earlier adventures had a character who was trying to climb the side of a cliff and failed and so they had to figure out a different way to get into the place that they wanted to go except for uh, climbing up and that was something that happened sometimes it will just stop you you can't find the place okay maybe come back in a couple of levels when you have some new information or your skills higher uh, things like that so that is kind of my thoughts and opinions on failing forward so that's kind of uh, half of this so the next half I want to talk about or I don't know how the, the time will be but the second part of this would be failing so bad you set yourself up for success and this is something that I haven't experienced too much in either playing or game mastering it happened on our Friday Earth Dawn game um, which I'm a player so I'm not the one that set it up and it was wonderful it was like the most awesome new type of experience that I've had recently and I just I got a kick out of it um, I was laughing I was impressed I was just like a kid in a candy shop and I'll explain what happened two sessions ago so about four weeks ago our characters had been hired uh, to kind of uh, well I'll say this the, these three pe people that were somewhat associated with a bigger gang and we don't know if they were direct members of the gang or if they were just affiliated with the gang but there was these three people who were harassing somebody in town and one of our party members wanted something from a weaponsmith and my character is a weaponsmith my character is only third circle at, uh, currently and it needs somebody at least six circle wanted a uh, forge armor so my uh, <clears throat> this character finds a high circle weaponsmith and hey could you do this for me and the higher circle weaponsmiths or higher circle adepts of the town tend to be parts of organizations uh, not quite gang some of them are some of them aren't but wanted was basically asking this person to do this and the weaponsmith was yeah I'll do this but I need you to uh, take care of some business my nephew is also a weaponsmith he wants to do this become a weaponsmith on his own he doesn't want to rely on me which is you know it's a it's a good good ethical type thing not relying on somebody showing that you can do it yourself without a relative's name but he's being harassed and I don't like that so take care of that problem so it was a take care of the problem whether through talking or fighting or, or whatever so our characters go 
Uh, we talk to the, the nephew, that other, those members come out, these three people. There are some uh, vague threats thrown back and forth. And we decided to, to cool down a little bit because, again, we don't know, is this larger group, uh, this larger gang, are they part of it? Are we going to have to deal with the whole gang? Are they just affiliates? What happens if we, you know, take care of these three? We kind of didn't know what the dynamics were, so we wanted to explore how deep this went. And we were able to get the, uh, the, the nephew to meet us in secret, and he wasn't too thrilled about the idea because of other things but the the point is is we get to a point where we need information so our troubadour goes out and tries to talk uh, with shopkeepers merchants etc the the general public that we have seen these people talking to and we kind of figure out that they got a racket going not just with this weaponsmith basically their harassment was a you work for us and nobody else you know, type. It, it wasn't quite the uh, you're paying us protection money, but it was a you're exclusive to to us. And we were trying to tell the nephew, hey, we'll open up everybody. You're low circle. You're if you're not affiliated with anybody, you can get lots of business coming in. Um, but that was kind of the the thing we were doing, the harassment we were trying to stop. So we kind of figured out that we kind of learned that they were doing this other places. And when our troubadour went in to talk to these people failed miserably on all the conversation roles, first impression roles, all of these roles to gather information were just horrible roles. Fail, 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 fail. My character is a windling. I'm not, I don't have a, uh, a talent of stealthy stride, but I do have the skill. So I can be kind of sne sneaky. I'm small, you know, like 17 inches or so. I can fly, I can hide on rooftops and stuff. So my whole thing was, hey, I'll take off my armor, which is heavy and you know, limiting me and stuff like that, and I will try to be sneaky and I'll follow them around. Well, I fail all of my stealth rolls. Um, we are being followed, so every once in a while the Game Master had us roll you know, perception awareness, and we completely fail. So we spent this whole session utterly failing in all of our roles. And we're just like, we have no idea what anything really is happening besides the little tidbits that we were able to gain. And then that was the end of the last session. This session we started off. We are in the inn that we are staying at. Um, and we're discussing where do we go from here. And we weren't quite sure because we had failed so bad. But this is where the Game Master got ingenious. And I really have to... Uh, commend the game master for this he had our utter failure set us up for spectacular success and i'll explain this as we're you know talking about stuff i say okay we'll just try to st start again tomorrow but tonight we definitely want watches and it's something where if we're in ends and stuff in all our various fantasy games we usually try to hook things up to the doors to make noise or wake us up maybe have somebody uh, awake or something but this was a we need somebody fully awake fully on guard and we had it where uh, we were in three rooms and whoever was on guard was sitting out in the hallway to be able to watch the 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 doorway to this that led to the outside and the doorway this that led to the the common area sit in the middle of the hallway you know two two doors here two doors here so kind of in the middle of the doors and basically during watch <laughs> just back and forth back and forth make sure uh, things are, <laughs> are going well so boom right in the middle of first watch which my character was on the the door to the outside comes busting in and these three adepts come in and that's when we learned what they were by their fighting style a warrior a uh, shaman and a gauntlet and my character is a weaponsmith. I was fully armored, like I had my shield and my hammer and everything, because like I said, we were expecting an ambush. So sure enough, these three come in here, everybody else is in their room. I made a horrible awareness roll. Um, I rolled a one. Uh, luckily, the, the rule, rule of ones wasn't in effect because you have to have at least two dice to do that. 
but it caught me unaware even though I'm the one watching around but it just didn't give me beforehand knowledge and then since I have armor plate plate armor my initiative is like a d4 minus two so I'm always last in initiative so these three come come running in and the the, the warrior uh, does the thing that um, if they beat your initiative by so much they get an extra attack on you so attacked and missed me because I am a windling at that time when they rushed up and we started an initiative I didn't get to call out to my friends yet to tell them what was going on so I'm the only one in the, in the hallway but I see them come in and I, you know jump or fly up and go to hit me I'm a windling I have very high uh, de defense physical defense and so boom doesn't or not boom opposite of boom a whiff uh, misses me and then the shaman goes and makes this thing try to bite me and it's physical damage I'm in plate armor the physical damage my plate armor uh, shrugged off so I did not take damage um, and then the gauntlet who is a low initiative so me and the gauntlet are at the low uh, hits me and and hurts me but I have a absorb blow charm that breaks and then my armor is really good so I don't a little 17 inch you know windling and this big man comes up and smashes me and I don't even have to make a knockdown test so then my turn and yes I whiffed I was rolling really bad I was just rolling bad that night it was just my normal defense and my normal armor was what protected me because I was making bad uh, avoid blows I was making bad steel thought rolls I was making bad to hit rolls but just the way I finally decided to build my character which in the past I've been grateful for and things like this make me even more grateful for um, deciding to, to switch from a, a spry flying all around and wearing the lightest armor and having a high niche to somebody who had a low niche and wearing plate mail and plate armor but that's kind of another story but basically all three of them came in they missed me didn't do damage to me or did damage to me and did not knock me down then I'm able to to cry out a couple of the other characters had actually made their uh, awareness check so it kind of heard some weird things so they kind of woke up our warrior had living armor so it's embedded uh, at that point it was blood pebbles embedded into him so he didn't have to worry about putting on armor he's a troll too so he came up and boom hit the uh, I think the gauntlet or, and our dwarf mage doesn't have armor flung open the door did some earth darts our archer came out basically everybody except for me who could not hit just came out and hurt them really bad in like uh, the first round and in the second round the one the shaman in the back who hadn't gone forward basically said this is not what we expected and turned around and ran away very soon after the warrior ran around and turned away and when the the shaman said this is not what I expected I just died laughing because it clicked we had sucked so bad in the previous session that these characters logically thought we were completely incompetent that we could not do anything we were probably first circle adepts or even like not adepts that were just going around town huffing and puffing and not being able to do anything and when they actually got into a fight with like seven of us then they realized their mistake but the previous session had completely led them to believe they followed us without being detected every time we tried to sneak behind them they saw us they you know found out we were trying to mess with the, you know talk to the merchants etc all of that had led them to believe we were completely incompetent and I was just like we have a new plan in our arsenal of plans like if we can't figure out something let's just act incompetent and wait for them to, to come to us basically but it was really really fun uh, we did end up uh, knocking out the gauntlet and reviving him um, we actually used the healing kit on him which was kind of shocking 
I don't necessarily disagree with it. Um, I was fixing the door as a weaponsmith craftsman, you know, for the in innkeeper at that time. But we basically talked to the gauntlet and came up with a halfway amicable uh, solution that we just wouldn't bother them anymore. They'd leave that one weaponsmith alone and they could do whatever other rackets they had and we didn't really care about that. We just wanted them to leave that one weaponsmith. There's other weaponsmiths in town. So whatever didn't quite... Uh, I, my character wasn't there, like I said, for that specific thing. But basically, we came up with a solution to the problem that didn't end in either their side or our side losing anybody's life. So that was really cool. And the main thing was the... We didn't fail and... Well, we kind of failed and stopped. But we definitely didn't fail forward. But our failure set up success. And that was just a really cool thing that occurred that I am still uh, very happy and like excited about that we sucked so bad that our opponents rightfully underest like completely and utterly unestimated what we were capable of doing with a big group um, in, in fights when the dice were halfway rolling decently so I'll go ahead and end that for today. So that's my thoughts about failing forward, when it's appropriate, when it might not be appropriate. And an alternative is the failure that sets you up for success. That's not a fail forward. The plot in that way didn't, which what we wanted to do was get the information on them, follow them back, learn who the gang was, and all of this stuff. That was our plan. None of that happened that was not a fail forward it was a fail that set us up for a success which was the doing what we wanted to do get them stop harassing the weaponsmith so once again i'm Lynn crafton jr aka zorlalchheim less than guru and until next time i'll catch you later